Good Shabbos, everyone. I'm Greg Yowitz, board chair of the Jewish Federation of St. Louis. And I'm Brian Herstig, president and CEO of the Federation. We appreciate you all joining us again for our weekly uh, Shabbat message. Um, you know, we would be remiss without acknowledging uh, what a difficult week this has been, and actually a number of weeks this has been, uh, both in St. Louis, uh, in cities around the country, um, and around the world. And um, just think that before we get started with this week's message, we just, we just really need to acknowledge that and, uh, and know that there have been a lot of challenges. Uh, you've probably noticed, or you may have noticed yesterday, that our community flagpole uh, series was postponed and, and put off for last night, you know, really just out of respect for everything else that's going on in this community. Uh, we can certainly resume that at any time, but uh, Rick and the Jewish Rock Radio team and the Federation just felt like we should take a break this week. And so hopefully you understand that and uh, uh, we just want to acknowledge that and, and uh, um, we're glad you're with us to, uh, to watch again today. Yeah, you know, um, Greg, I'm relatively new to town. I've been here for about five months. Um, and so a lot of people out there don't know me as well as you do. But um, I just wanted to um, share for myself, this has been uh, really an extraordinarily difficult week. Um, I moved here five months ago from Minneapolis. Um, and the work I was doing before I came here was with an organization that worked to break the cycle of generational poverty. Um, so really to look at um, and impact um, systemic change um, in the institutionalized uh, racism that happens for communities of color. And so um, with what happened with George Floyd last week, I actually worked in, in those very neighborhoods and was working with people just like George, um, who found themselves um, inside a system that had built um, that had built itself um, in order to kind of uh, system systematically um, kind of keep them down. Um, so I know that if I weren't here right now, I would actually be right in the middle of everything that was going on. Um, so while this has personally been a, a really difficult and trying time. Um, I'm also really glad um, to be here for a lot of different reasons. Um, but the most important of which is that, um, is that I feel like we as a community are making a difference. And we have a long history of a relationship, um, not just with the black community, but with, with a lot of different communities of color. Um, and we're lucky that we have organizations in our community who are tasked with building relationships with other communities. And we rely on those organizations and lean on them, particularly at times like this. Um, and those, uh, I mean, the ones that come to mind are JCRC, NCJW, and ADL. Um, this is their work. This is what they do. This is why we help support them and what they do on behalf of the entire ecosystem of organizations um, in our Jewish community. Um, and um, there's been a lot of um, there's been a lot out this week from a lot of those organizations and probably every organization you can think of or a lot of them um, who have been making statements um, about what's going on. Um, and um, uh, a couple of things I think about in relationship to that are that um, in order for us to be able to speak um, about what's going on and, and, and how we can be part of the solution we as individuals in the community need to understand and accept our own biases and privileges that we've experienced. Um, and we have to be open um, to uh, ongoing dialogue with partners in communities of color to understand their challenges and what they need from us as a potential ally. Um, and that means building relationships and building relationships takes time and it takes trust um, and so um, that's why places like JCRC and CJW ADL, who have been doing that for years and years and years, are so important in times like this. And many of you may um, have noticed that the Federation has not made a statement around what's going on. And we just wanted to take a minute to explain um, why that is. It's not because we don't believe in what's going on um, and, and that we're not supportive of it. But we weren't comfortable making a statement until we could do two things. First, connect what's going on to our core mission, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, and secondly, 
explain what kinds of actions we as an organization are going to take in order to impact systemic change in this area. We don't enter into anything um, to, to be a flash in the pan or to um, just kind of uh, get, get a PR bump out of it. When we determine to move into things as a community, we do so in order to make a real lasting change. That's why our strategic plan has been so great because it's about um, a long-term plan to move areas of our community forward. Um, and so if we're gonna step into this area in any way and have any kind of communication to the community, what we wanna make sure is that um, what we're doing is based in our core values and that we know exactly how we're gonna have that kind of impact. And at the end of the day, um, what is happening today is really disheartening. It's really frustrating. It is also inevitable, given the fact um, that, that this has been going on for a very long time and that change has been needed for a long time. But it, this really is part of our everyday work. We are a community that, um, that that values and focuses on justice in so many different ways, whether um, that's um, justice um, in terms of social justice, whether that's uh, food scarcity availability justice, whether that's you know all, all these different things. Um, we are a community that's based in that. Uh, and I think back to um, to the phrase from Talon Sedek, Sedek Tirduf, justice, justice shall you pursue. Um, and um, that, that's one of the core values that we are based on. Um, and we are working as a leadership um, and as an organization to talk through and figure out how it is that we can help have a long-term and a lasting impact on this. And when we do, we'll, we, we will share it with the community at that time. Absolutely. I mean, it's understandable. We, we all want to do something. Uh, we all want to show support. And it's a challenging time not the least of which because gathering together is a basic way of doing things and given the current environment with the pandemic gathering is a challenge and that makes it uh, even more frustrating but I know that there's a number of ways people could show support um, and stay safe at the at the same time and that there are efforts underway or that have been going on in some cases that I'll talk about literally for over a decade uh, through partners in our community like our Holocaust Museum and Learning Center, which partnered with the ADL uh, Heartland region over 15 years ago uh, to facilitate uh, what's called the LEES program, Law Enforcement and Society, um, that was initiated by the National Holocaust Museum. And LEES explores uh, how police core values influence their, their profession um, and in a way of, to increase a diverse society and how us helping them, our Holocaust Museum, right? It, it's, as crazy as it may sound to people, there are classes and classes year after year of law enforcement agents who come in for sensitivity training in the Holocaust Museum, and that helps the overall community. And it's great because that's a partnership with our museum um, and with the ADL. And then there's cultural leadership, which has been around for, I think, 16 years. Uh, and it's a youth education and leadership nonprofit that's dedicated to creating a more just community by training middle and high school kids to be the next generation of civic and civil rights leaders. And students learn about our country's history and systemic oppression and about how Jewish and African American cultures um, of resilience um, and enduring histories um, have, have made it to this point and how they can help be part of that future solution as well. And our own, JC, you know, the JCRC just recently launched the JCRE, the Jewish Coalition on Racial Equity, which seeks to create an inclusive and impactful approach for Jewish communal engagement on issues of racism and racial justice. And they are gonna support initiatives from partner organizations and work with communities of color, as well as provide opportunities for the Jewish community to reflect and learn and discuss our individual and communal roles in dismantling systemic racism. Um, so there's, there's a lot of frustration, I know. The, the, the COVID crisis has exacerbated people's frustration because they wanna help and they wanna be safe and, and how difficult that is to feel that your choice of trying to show support is limited because you're concerned about your own physical health is immensely challenging and so there's a lot of you can look at any of the three of the websites for the JCRC or the ADL or HMLC 
um, or um, NCJW. I mean, there's just so much that is going on. You can look online if you if you're unable to get out of the house and 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 still be part of supporting you know what's going on. Yeah, and that's not even to mention our synagogues. Each uh, many synagogues have a tzedek or some kind of a, a committee or internal structure that that, that deals with uh, racial and uh, social and civil um, justice kind of issues. Oh, absolutely. I know. Uh, you know, it's from my personal experience uh, when I was at Sheremeth, our our tzedek committee was vibrant and active and um, has been uh, around for I believe for decades. And so there are opportunities if you belong to a congregation. There are opportunities if you don't belong to a congregation. Um, there are tons of online resources and, um, you know, just know that the Federation is committed to justice. As Brian said, this is, this is who we are. Um, we were always about this and we're gonna do what we can. And what we wanna do is be extremely thoughtful and planful and deliberate about what we do. And so, um, stay tuned. You'll be hearing more about this, I'm sure, from us in the coming months. Um, and, uh, you know, again, we, we support uh, people's right to protest, um, obviously peacefully. Um, and, you know, just, just know that the Feder this, is, this is something that's talked about at the Federation uh, quite often. Yeah, and I would just add, as, as we close this out this week, too, that um, at the end of the day, uh, the Jewish community is an ecosystem of uh, of a num of uh, a lot of different organizations and groups and individuals, and no one institution inside it can do everything and be everything for everyone. Um, as as a federation, we actually um, have an expertise in certain areas, and we rely on our partners uh, to have an expertise in others. And this is a specific area where we. Um, where we rely on our partners that have been mentioned, NCJW, ADL, JCRC, um, to take the lead in these issues. And they have, as Greg mentioned, for years and years and years, and they have over the past week or so um, with their statements um, about um, what's been going on um, and how they're gonna respond. And, and we will as well um, after some, as Greg said, thoughtful, deliberate, planful conversation. At the end of the day, look, this is a long-term societal issue. It didn't get created overnight, and it certainly is not gonna be solved overnight. And our job isn't to uh, necessarily be the ones to solve it. Uh, our job is to help make sure that we continue to, to move the agenda forward and do it from the place of our own values, which we have a lot that relate to this, um, and do it in a way that respects the, right of, the rights of other communities and our own community in its, in its diversity. So, um, you know, I, I guess it, as we close out, I, um, we're thinking of, of, of all of you out there um, it, on top of the COVID situation, we now have, have this going on. It can be an uncertain time um, for people and create some stress and anxiety. Um, and I would just um, remind people that um, our, uh, the agency we turn to in those times is Jewish Family Service, JFS, um, and they have mental health, emotional health um, services available for people for any reason if you should need it and they can refer you to um to other places um if if they can't help or feel that your help could uh be, be gotten better from somewhere else so that's part of that ecosystem um, that that i was talking about and, and why we are part of a community so greg um thank you uh, and the board for your leadership and serious thought around this as we continue to, to wrestle with it. Um, and thank you uh, to, to the community for your thoughts um, as this has been going on. Um, and uh, we hope to see you next week with um, something different to talk about. Exactly. Have a great week. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.